Hello you amazing hackers, today I want to give you guys a methodology that you can use while you're bug bounty hunting. A few of you guys have asked me to explain to you guys what I do exactly when I bug bounty hunt and I've tried to put it down into a sort of a checklist that I'm going to divide into a few different video parts and I hope you guys can follow along and create your own checklist because what I don't want is that you guys write down my checklist and that you just copy it blindly, that you don't make any modifications um, you guys can try but the problem is once this gets out of course a lot of people are going to use it if they want to use it and that's going to create some problems because um, of course there are so only so many bugs and only so many programs out there so um, what I want you to take away from this is a methodology that you can use and I want you to also think about your own methodology um, the first thing you have to do is of course recon. Now I don't do recon in a normal sense of the word. I don't go out looking for subdomains. I just focus on the main app, but I still have to do a little bit of recon on the main app. So the first thing I want to do is check out all the content I can have. So what I'm going to do is I have of course my um, browser open. My browser is mapped to my burp in here. Um, and I'm just going to manually browse the website. Now as I manually browse the website, you guys can see that um, that there are some calls in the proxy and this will also populate the sitemap under the target tab so as you can see now in my sitemap I have some information about the website now the next thing I want to do I also want to do after uh, I'm done manually browsing I want to discover more content now I have Burp Pro so I'm just going to get the content discovery running there are other ways to do that. I'm going to stop my content discovery here and I'm going to open my, uh, my terminal. And as you guys can see, you can also just use GoBuster. So the command I was typing is GoBuster and then dir for directory mode. Uh, and then I use the parameter dash w. <coughs> this is uh, to indicate my word list. And I'm using the directory word list from, I think it was Godmilk. Um, I'm not sure I'll put it in the description below, but it's the 2.3 medium directory list uh, And I'm using it on my URL google.com So when I run this it's going to start giving me all kinds of output and these are all subdirectories I can go to so for example when I open Google and I go to google slash password I will be redirected google.com slash password and It redirects me indeed to my account password has been changed so this is a way to map all uh, kinds of subdirectories of your target. Now what you also want to do is you want to run a Nikto scan. Nikto is a site vulnerability scanner that will give you all sorts of information about your target as well. This can also sometimes give you hidden directories, but it will also give you all sorts of other useful information. Now the command I run is just Nikto minus minus host, and then I just put my host in there. So. Those are a few of the mapping the app parts that you can do. Now, when you have all of this information, of course you have to put it somewhere into a document because taking notes is at least as important as hacking itself. Uh, you have to have a good mind map of what you're doing. And what I usually do is I make a OneNote folder <clears throat> and I just create uh, subdirectories based on what I'm doing. So I'll have a tab for Nikto, I'll have a tab for GoBuster, I'll have a tab for anything I need. Now one thing you guys can always do as well and I always recommend this is just inspecting the element and going to the developer console and finding all the JavaScript files. Now there are a lot of JavaScript files in here. Check them out. Um, a lot of people don't take the time to read through the JavaScript files even if they're obfuscated just deobfuscate them because they might be able to give you some hidden endpoints and hidden endpoints are always the best. Those are usually not tested properly and it means that there are probably lots of bugs to be found on the hidden endpoints. Now of course it will also help you identify which kind of technology is being used. For example we can see that runtime polyfills and uh, vendor is being used here. Now um, when we have all of this information we can move on to the next part which is identifying the functionality. We've been clicking through our application we know what we can do, we can open a product, we can log in, we can create an account. Uh, we also have to make sure, of course, that we do log in and that we do. 
um, create an account that we test all of this functionality to um, and that we map it as well of course um, but now we want to know what can we actually do we can search that's a functionality um, we can do a basket we can open this basket there are many things we can do um, now what we can also try to do is find admin functionality maybe our directory brute forcing has found us some admin functionality that we can try to hack um, maybe even a parameter uh, a debug parameter is available so a debug parameter would be when I have a website that runs for example on PHP and I would add a question mark debug equals true <clears throat> sometimes I might be able to see a different page than I usually would because the debug parameter um, tells, tells the, the user that it's testing so when I have all of my functionality written down and I know everything I can do then it's time to find all of my parameters and data entry points so we have had burp running in the background now the proxy was also open now what I usually do is I usually just click on the bar and at the top uh, this is the filter that opens and then I click show only parameterized requests when I do this I will only get uh, requests that have a parameter in them so I can easily identify all of the different data entry points for example here I can see that my queue is a data entry point so map all of them later on you will do SQL injection you will try CSRF uh, cross-site scripting SSDI there are all kinds of things that you will do later but first you need to map all of your entry points um, next you also need to identify any external inputs for example on our uh, juice shop here we have a directory called FTP maybe there is a cron job running in the background that picks up files from here that would also be a good entry point for an attack we could try maybe there isn't as much validation or filters on there uh, as there would be on the main functionality um, it's also important that you know what technology is being used for example we have a, an FTP server here when we try to open something we shouldn't be able to for example this file we get some kind of error message here express and then some some version number um, write these down as well it's always important to know what kind of technology your target is using um, and the error messages might be able to help at that so when the most important thing I want you guys to take from this is to just create your own node structure you guys know what to look for now you guys I will also put this in the description so you guys have an idea of what to do create your own mind map create your own step-by-step um, -step guide of what you want to do um, make a checklist you'll have mine as a start but be sure to create your own and also take proper notes when you're hacking you will be needing those notes later and you might be able to even find some extra information when you do all of this so I hope this was helpful for you guys um, if this was useful in any way please leave a like um, it helps me a lot with the YouTube algorithm also subscribe please if you haven't already and I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye!